Welcome everyone to our new series of Good News Club. Wow, another new series. Wow, time is going by really fast. Well, I have an interesting little book for you to see today. And we're going to talk about the colors in this book for the next five weeks. Because this book has five colors. It has the gold one, it's very shiny. It has the dark color. It has the red color. It has a very clean color. And it has a green color. And each of these colors means something very important. They share a very important piece of the whole entire story. And the story that I'm talking about is God's story. It's a true story. And for the next five weeks, we're going to learn memory verses and Bible lessons. And we're going to have songs that teach us all about this little book. It's called The Wordless Book. You know why? Because look, you see any words? You see any pictures? Nope. We call it the wordless book because it doesn't have any words, but yet it tells a true, wonderful story about God. And we're going to start off today with a new song. Our new song is called the Wordless Book Song. Yes, it is. And so for the next five weeks, that will be our theme song, the Wordless Book Song. So let's go ahead and hear it. I hope you enjoyed that song. Let's go ahead and pray before we move on any further, and then I'll tell you about our special visitors. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone who's watching. I pray that we will remember the things that we learned today. Help us to make them real in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. I have two friends that you'll see with me today. One is Wilfredo, you've seen him before. He's gonna do our missions time. And then the next one is David, and he is doing our memory verse for today. So let's go ahead and get into that. Hello everyone, my name is Wilfredo Rivera, and I'm gonna be the person telling you about the mission story for the weeks that follows. And I'm so happy to be part of this online club, and thank you for Janelle for inviting me to be part. 
and I'm so thankful that you are here listening to what all we are doing to praise the Lord. I know we are in a, in the middle of a pandemic, but there is nothing impossible. We could, we could nothing impossible. We could worship God, although there is nothing we could do. We could gather, but we could do it online, and then we could learn about more about God, right? So for the mission story, the title for the story is the girl who sang in the goat house. The girl who sang in the goat house. And as we move on, we're going to know why it got its name from the girl who sang in the goat house. In the goat house. Damn. Okay. So the story was written by Francis Harling, original art by Sam Butcher. And it's a real story. And it's of a little girl called Titi. So, nervously pitting her dress, Titi, which means a little girl, hesitated outside the schoolroom door. Beyond that door lay a whole new world, a world of pencils and papers and a black cover book. But it was a world of mystery and fear too, for inside that room was a bitcher, which means a white person, who could swallow up her spirit or so Titi thought. Only that morning, her parents had warmed her. If you go to school when you are old enough to marry and have children, they will all be papers and pencils. So, what bring back Titi of going to school was her parents because her parents believed that school wouldn't help her in no way. School wouldn't be important for she. But she wanted to go to school. She feel that of going to school. She was only at the door like out of the school room right she was just looking at what they were doing so that sounds strange but that is what the people in titi's village in the african country of nigeria really believe so titi live in nigeria and that was what the african parents believe that school won't be something good enough because at the end of the day her children would be pencils and papers right but you know, Titi was so curious that she was willing and brave the bachelor find out for herself what the world was like inside the school room. So she was at the outside of the room, so she wanted to go inside and see what is within that room. Her eyes were glowing with excitement and the prospect of trying something new. She slipped through the door. She stayed in the back of the room, hoping the missionary teacher would notice her. So she just entered the room and sat down way at the back so that the teacher and the missionary, the teacher was a missionary, didn't see her, right? But the teacher did see her, like her eyes were looking at Titi, she's new and I should get to her. So the teacher told him, Titi, come here. She said kindly, slowly the little girl, Titi, walked forward and awkwardly grabs the pencil and paper the teacher held out to her. Holding the slender wooden, stick in her hands titi remembered again the stories her family told her not only that education won't be nothing good for her but that the teacher would do something bad to her but titi shivered and thought of the awful things that might happen to her now titi this is how you write the first letter of the alphabet of your language said the, the teacher and the teacher placed the pencil correctly in Titi's sticky hand and gwingled her fingers. Titi looked from her own hand to the hand covering her, which was the teacher's hand. And the teacher guided her while writing. She felt that warmness and kindness that this teacher would be to her. And what the others have told her that this teacher would do something happen to, to her, right? But the teacher invited Titi to come into the school and was kind to her. So the teacher made the invitation that Titi could come every day to school and she could learn more and Titi was so excited she and at the end of the day they became friends and Titi was really interested in school so for next week we're going to be doing the chapter 2 of the girl who sang in the good house if you don't want to miss the story and the second chapter you better come on and stay safe always take your precautions and god bless everyone
Can you tell me the name of someone who loves you? Lots of people love us, but I know someone which really loves you and me. And the Bible teaches who is that person. Okay? The Bible is divided into two sections. The Old Testament and the New Testament. And John, it is found on the New Testament. Alright, so when you get to know a Bible, you will see that there are bigger numbers and smaller numbers. The bigger numbers are the chapters and the smaller numbers are the verses. So the verse that we will get to know today is John 3, 16. John chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's read, it. Let's read it one more time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, this verse means that for God so loved the world, God loves all the people in the world, including you and me, that he gave his only begotten son. He loves you so much that he, that he sent his son, his only son, to die for your sin. Sin is anything you think, say, or do that breathe God's blood. That's whoever believes in him. Anyone who chooses to believe in Jesus as the one who died and rose again to pay for your for his sin and it says should not perish. This means when you believe in Jesus, you will not have to be separated from God forever in a place of what of punishment. And also it says but have everlasting life. Instead, you will be forgiven of your sin and have a life that lasts forever with God in heaven someday. Do you know how much God loves you? Have you ever believed in Jesus? If you haven't, you can believe in Him today. Listen carefully during the lesson. You will, you will get to know how you can believe in Jesus so you will have life with him forever. Let's read the verse one more time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I really like this verse because it says how much God loves us. I will read it one more time if that if you have a Bible you can read it with me. Alright? And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Maybe you have already believed in God's son. God wants you to tell others about him. They need to know that believing in Jesus is the only way to have life forever in heaven. You can even use this verse to tell them about Jesus. Okay? A song will be given after, after this. And it is about the verse that I have teach today.
should not perish, but have eternal God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life, eternal life, eternal life. Like I mentioned before, we'll be learning about the colors of the wordless book for the next five weeks. The first color we're going to talk about today is the most beautiful one. You want to know what it is? It's the gold color. The gold color is what we'll talk about today. And to help us as we turn, as we learn about these different colors and what they mean, we're going to use this picture book. And this I'll show you the cover. Here it is. We're going to use this picture book to help us learn more about what each color means. Today, we're going to be talking about the gold color. And the gold color reminds me about heaven. And here is an example of what heaven could look like. It's a beautiful place. It has precious stones. It has mansions. It is made of gold. It is beautiful. I have never been to heaven yet, but I know from what the Bible says that heaven is a beautiful place. Listen to what the Bible says here. And the 12 gates, the 12 gates, there's 12 gates in heaven, were 12 pearls, each of the gates made of a single pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. That means you can see right through it. Imagine that, a street made of pure gold? Whoa, now that is some nice city. A, a city called heaven. That is going to be a wonderful, wonderful place. God lives in heaven and God is perfect. He's never done anything wrong. Heaven is a real and wonderful place where God lives. And the Bible teaches us many things about God. It teaches us also that God loves you and me. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. That's the first part of our memory verse for today. He loves you and he loves me. Remember, you are part of the world. God loves you. He created you. He created the animals, the planets, the stars, the air that we're breathing, the colors we see, but the most wonderful thing he made is you and me. People, he made you in his image. Wow, you are so special to God. God loves you so much and he will never stop loving you. The Bible says that God is holy. That means he's perfect and he's never done anything wrong. He's pure and he lives in heaven, which is a beautiful, wonderful place where there's peace and joy and love. It's a wonderful place of heaven. And that's what the gold color reminds us about. In the Bible, God tells us about some things that will not be in heaven. Let's take a look and see what they are. Some things that will not be in heaven. I'm only going to show you part of the picture. So I don't want you to see everything at once. What about, oh, see those three things? A sun, a moon, and a lamp. Will those things be in heaven? No, they won't be in heaven. Listen to what the Bible says about those things. It's right here. If you want to find it in your Bible, it's found in Revelation, which is the last book of the Bible, chapter 21, and it is verse number 23 and it says and the city they're talking about heaven has no need of sun or moon to shine on it for the glory of god gives its light and its lamp is the lamb the lamb is another name for jesus when they call him the lamb of god they're referring to jesus so it, the bible just said they won't, whoops, you almost saw that next picture. 
there won't be need of sun, moon, or lamp. Why? Because God is the light in heaven. Wow. There's another thing that won't be in heaven either. I'm going to show you these two at the bottom first. Sadness, crying, tears. That won't be in heaven. Heaven will be a wonderful, joyful place. What about death? That won't be in heaven either. Everyone will live forever in heaven. This final thing, sin. Oh, sin will not be in heaven. That's a good thing. Because sin is the thing that God cannot allow in heaven. There's one thing that God cannot allow in heaven that can't be where God is, and that is sin. Sin is anything you think, say, or do that displeases God. And the Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned, not just one person, everyone, for all have sinned. You have and I have, and because of that sin, you're separated from God. And you have to be punished. Just like you get a punishment, perhaps from your parents or your guardian, when you sin. Well, God has to punish sin as well. And his punishment is a much bigger punishment. And that is to be separated from him. Our sin is a terrible problem. We can't get rid of it on our own. We need someone to help us. Sin is a great big problem. And it cannot be allowed into heaven. That's a problem because you and me are born with that sin. And it separates you from God. There's that one thing that can't be in heaven. And that is sin. But the Bible, not only does it tell us things that won't be in heaven, but it tells us about some things that will be in heaven. So let's see what those are. Hmm. Let's take a look at this one first. It talks about mansions. Did you know that when you believe in Jesus, he promised to make, to make you a mansion in heaven? Jesus said he's promised and he's going to prepare a place for you so that when you go to heaven, you will have a place there for you that Jesus prepared for you. Yes, there will be a mansions in heaven. And then also, there will be angels in heaven. How many angels? We don't know. There, will, I know this, there will be a lot. The Bible says 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands on thousands. That's so many angels. Now, angels, they're not people who died and went to heaven. That's not an angel. An angel is something that is created by God for a very special purpose. And the word angel actually means messenger, if you didn't know that. That's your little trivia for today. But there's something else in heaven, something very, very important. Jesus is there, yes, definitely. And it's so wonderful that he is there. We'll be worshiping him all the time in heaven. But there's something else very important. Look at this. This is called the Lamb's Book of Life. This book is a very special book. In this book are all the names of people who have believed in Jesus. And how will you get into heaven? If you have believed in Jesus, your name will be in this book. And the names of the people in this book will be allowed into heaven. Is your name in the Lamb's Book of Life? Hmm. That's a very good question. I hope and trust that your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life because that's a very important decision to make. The Lord Jesus will be there. That is the most wonderful thing. And did you see in my picture that Jesus had these little scars on his hands. You see that? What does that remind you about? 
I hope it reminds you about Jesus, that he died on the cross for you. Jesus gave his blood when he died on the cross for your sin and mine. Now, he didn't have to. He wasn't forced to. But he willingly died because he loves you. If you watched our video last week, you'll remember that we talked about how God loves you. In fact, in the Bible, it says in 1 John 1 verse 7 that the blood of Jesus, God's son, cleanses us from all sin. Jesus gave his blood when he died on the cross. And because he gave his blood and he gave his life, he took your complete punishment for sin. And he can cleanse you. He can forgive your sin. Wow. Now that is love. That is something so special that Jesus did. He died for your sin. He took your complete punishment. He was buried, but God brought him back to life. He's alive today in heaven. And Jesus did that because he loves you and he is in heaven. And when we get to heaven, we're going to worship Jesus with everyone else who's up there in heaven as well. And it will be a wonderful, wonderful time. God loves you. And he wants you to be in heaven too. Now, Jesus, after he rose from the dead, he was still on this earth for 40 days after. And he told his disciples and his followers many things during those days. But at the end of 40 days, Jesus ascended. He went up into heaven. This is a big picture. He went up into heaven and look at all his disciples and his followers watching Jesus go up into heaven. Yes, Jesus told them a very special thing that they must do. And if you have believed in Jesus as your savior, you should do this too. The Bible says that Jesus told them right here. He said, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. What does proclaim means? That means tell. So Jesus wants you to tell others about him. Yes, maybe you, you can tell your friends. Maybe it's your neighbors or your family members. Whoever it is, you can choose to tell them about Jesus because not everyone knows. So you have to tell them about Jesus. And maybe you can't tell them everything in the Bible, but you can tell them one thing that you know, one encouraging thing. You can tell them that God loves them, or you can tell them that Jesus died for their sin. You can tell them something, and that would be a very good thing, because Jesus wants you to tell others about him. Jesus, he went back into heaven, and someday he's going to return. He's going to come back, and he will take you to heaven when he comes back. So we have to be ready because the only people that he will take are the ones who believe in him. Yes, that's a very important decision to believe in Jesus. If you've never done that before, you can do that today to believe in Jesus. The Bible says, it's actually found in our memory verse for today. John three sixteen, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So God loves you so much, but your sin separates you from God. So that's why he sent Jesus to die for your sin. Jesus gave his life for your sin. Because Jesus did that, you can believe. And if you believe in Jesus, that he died and came alive, you will not perish, which means to be separated from God, but you will have everlasting life. And that is life forever with God as your very best friend. It starts as soon as you believe in him and it continues on forever. If you want me to help you make that decision, look in the description of the video and I'd love to help you. If you have any questions, let me know. And if you want to pray and tell Jesus something like this, to believe in him, you can do that. You can say something like, Dear Jesus, I know I have sinned and I'm sorry. I believe you died and rose again. 
Please forgive my sin. Please give me everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you tell him something like that and you truly mean it, he will forgive your sin. He will give you everlasting life. And how do I know that? Because the Bible says so. And God never, ever breaks his promises. That is so wonderful. Well, that's all for this week. I'll see you again next week. Have a good week. Bye.